Hi, welcome to another video. So I must say thank you to Pico Technology. I've just purchased this from eBay and I didn't want to wait till next week for the delivery and they kindly shipped it quickly for me. That means I can mess about with it all weekend. And I'm actually working on a small switch mode power supply, designing one. All these ones from China, although they're small, they're actually still you know, sort of two, three times too big. So I'm designing my own, making up my own transformer. I'll give you a quick demo on that crash course on transformers flyback transformers. Anyway, to test a flyback transformer connected to the mains, the primary, you can't get your scope probe and ground the neutral on the mains. Uh, and then some oscilloscopes obviously don't take more than 300 volts in the input. This differential probe allows you to connect up to something like 1000 volts RMS max. Category 3 safety. So this is in place of your scope probe, that's the neutral that's the you know, signal pin. You can connect this directly to ground or any other pin and probe somewhere else. So yeah, thank you to Pico for rushing it to me. It was actually 269 pounds, more than I want to pay, but there's some cheap ones from China. Didn't want to put my money into them. Um, and the Keysight ones, and, or Agilent differential probes, a sort of best part of a thousand pound. This only goes up to 25 megs, but for the work I'm doing, it's plenty fast enough. So if I take the cover off, you stick four AA batteries in there. If you're measuring less than 70 volts, you set the attenuation one to 10, and then set your scope to the same. More than 70 volts, put it at 1 to 100. The adjust is just to set the offset, which has already been calibrated. I've already messed about with it. Uh, so you turn the power on, connect this to your live circuit, and you're away. Obviously plug the other end on your scope. So I've been messing about with this switch mode power supply. I'll give you a quick crash course. Actually, incidentally, look, you can plug DC, 6 volts DC, or 9 volts DC in the side. Anyway, fantastic piece of kit. This is enabling me to complete my design. It's no good try and wind a transformer with guesswork. You need to measure it. So I'll give you a demonstration. This is actually a side-by-side -side fridge freezer board and they usually have a sort of capacitor drop circuits. You yeah, drop the 240 down to five but I'm building this switch mode power supply. A capacitor used to drop voltage will always fail. Now this switch mode power supply is run by the tiny chip, a uh, little coil there that I've made up, a couple of uh, electrolytics across the mains rectifier, and job done. So this neutral, or this, co this ground over here, is actually mains neutral. Ordinarily, you can't stick your earth probe of your scope on neutral because you'll just short out the neutral to earth and trip the house. So, this little beauty is enabling me to do my job. So, that's the neutral, that's the drain connected to the drain pin of the tiny switch, which you can have sort of actually earlier, I had nearly sort of 600 volts peak to peak. Uh, overshoot from this coil. I've since taken a few turns off and now I've got 130 odd. Been able to measure it all because of this. It's actually my birthday in a few days. Didn't want to wait for my birthday, I wanted it before the weekend. Today's Friday so I've got all weekend to mess about with my circuit. So thank you again Pico Technology. They sent it quickly but however I did pay for it. It's actually cheaper getting it from Pico Technology on eBay then going to one of the main distributors, by the time you add the VAT, it comes to more than £269, so nice piece of kit. I recommend it if you want to work with mains. Well, it's a crash course on flyback inverters. So here's some transformers I prepared earlier. Actually, this one I haven't touched. I think this is an E20, and this ferrite core drops down each side and one down the middle. And you've got two halves to increase the inductance. Here's one I stripped down, but that was actually still too big. 
Here's another one I wound. That's the secondary primary over here. Uh, that works well because obviously miles too big. So the circuit, where's my pointer? I use this plastic because <laughs> a lot of you complain when I touch my screen with a screwdriver. Anyway, 240 volt mains in here, it's, well, th this tiny switch, so this I'm actually using the 264, TNY 264, will actually run from 85 volts, 90 volts, 80 up to 240. So it's sort of a universal supply. You'd find this sort of circuit as a standby driving your TV, that sort of stuff, or a run washing machines, fridge freezers, that sort of thing. So you've got the mains coming in here. This is just a single rectification diode. You can get full bridge or full wave rectification. Two electrolytic capacitors, but this circuit here, if I just concentrate on this transformer, that's the primary and that's the secondary. The little dot denotes the start of the winding. So you start winding it there, do like, you know, say 100 turns, uh, and that's the a, that's a last turn that connects to the live. So your live comes in on a flyback situation, comes in on the output of the transformer, and the start winding is joined to the drain of this chip. And then you see the source there, direct connected to ground. So this uh, oscillates internally, sort of 120 kilohertz, 120, 132, depending on the feedback setup. If it needs less power, the frequency will drop. If it needs more power, the frequency will increase. And so if you've got 100 turns here, if you want sort of five volts, you will have sort of 10, 12 turns here, get five volts out, fast rectifier, zener diode and a couple of resistors, transistor to regulate the feedback. So you, yeah, 100 turns there and like 24 turns there will actually give you 24 volts out. This differential probe, I'm measuring this point here. Right, this is a screen capture from uh, using Benchview on this Keysight scope. Fantastic piece of kit. And before I had my differential probe, I couldn't see any of this because I cannot connect the thing to ground. I didn't have an isolation transformer. Uh, there's, they're sort of 60 odd pound for a decent current capability, but I just couldn't measure it because it's uh, it's not isolated. It's everything's with reference to neutral and, and live. But so this is the coil being switched in and out on that drain pin, and if you look when it, this is actually switching off, you get a massive spike. So I had plenty of inductance. I actually had something like 4.5 milli Henry loads of inductance, the coil wasn't getting hot or anything, the chip wasn't getting hot, everything was running smoothly, but you know, I just didn't know what was happening and I just can't start churning them out if I don't know what's happening. But look at this spike, being able to measure this because of this uh, Pico technology differential probe, look down there, 579 volts peak to peak, which is unacceptable, you know, much more than that, you blow the chip up. So after measuring that, I started looking at my transformer, took off some turns, and the result was, so look, my peak to peak now, being able to measure it, 134 volts, peak to peak, there to there. If I go back to the other picture, Are you in shot? Yes. So before I could actually measure the transformer, see what it was doing, I had loads of ringing, but look at this peak, to, look at this spike where the coil turns off or the, the drain switches off. A massive 579 volts peak to peak spike, and that will eventually kill that chip or certainly shorten the life. Not to mention the EMI. Uh, noise emissions and this is a live view using my trusty DSO X2012A with uh, MSO enabled this jitter down here there's actually a 4 kilohertz jitter on that chip 
to reduce the EMI interference. So if I just single capture that, probably won't be able to see it from there. Right, so now I've got it on the right screen. So this capture, 133 volts peak to peak. And because I've reduced the load, that's that transformer ringing three times before the next cycle. Uh, and that time is running at 44 kilohertz. Runs up to about 132, depending on the load. So crash course, D differential probe, I highly recommend this one if you're working under sort of 25 megs, I believe it is. 25 megs, 1000 volts, the DC plus peak AC. That's the power on off. Attenuation 1 to 10, 1 to 100. Just clip it to your mains and start measuring. Uh, I've got to go because I've got to cook the uh, dinner for my uh, missus. She's due home at 9. Hopefully, this video has helped. Might have given you some insights into sort of flyback inverters or, and wiring them up. Uh, and what to do and how to test them. Thank you for watching.